Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about cavity susceptibility, particularly as it's caused by oral bacteria. <clears throat> so first let's talk about cavities and what they are. They are also sometimes called dental caries. But they're basically damage to the teeth where you're getting holes in the enamel, um, they can get so bad that even like um, <clears throat> the underlying root can be exposed, um, which can be very painful. And so they can be the result of several factors. <clears throat> Excuse me. One is a diet high in acidic foods. So if you are eating a lot of food that has an acidic nature, then that acid can break down your enamel. So this would be like if you're drinking soda several times a week, um, if you're having a lot of lemon juice, um, my mom knew someone once who would suck on like lemon wedges, like put the lemon wedge in their mouth and, and just really suck on it and like walk around with it in there. And that degraded their tooth enamel and they got lots and lots of cavities from that. Also poor oral hygiene. So this refers to, you know, improper brushing, not doing it often enough, not spending enough time when you are brushing your teeth, not getting all of the tooth surfaces, forgetting to floss would be another example of poor oral hygiene. This can also contribute to cavities. Uh, and then the third kind of major factor is acid that is produced by oral bacteria. And this right here is our major focus today. So certain oral bacteria can ferment, remember that's a metabolic process, can ferment dietary carbohydrates. And when we're talking about carbohydrates, I'm talking about um, simple sugars, things like soda, candy, muffins, um, also um, refined carbohydrates, things like um, white bread, bagels, muffins, that kind of thing. Um, but really any carbohydrate can contribute to this process, but if we're having a diet high in those refined carbohydrates, it's even more likely. So they, <clears throat> these bacteria, they live in our mouths. We eat the sugar they ferment the sugar and that produces acids um, like lacto like what <clears throat> excuse me like lactic acid and the lactic acid then degrades the enamel that protective covering on your teeth and specifically it does this through a process known as decalcification So this is where the lactic acid contributes to leaching the calcium out of your enamel, making it softer and eventually making it degrade and wear away altogether. And there are several examples of bacteria that can do this process. Lactobacillus acidophilus and Streptococcus mutans are the two that we hear about most often. There's also Actinomyces odontolyticus and, and, and many more. So there's various types of bacteria that are capable of fermenting those sugars that are in your mouth and producing the acids that will break down your tooth enamel. And whereas the acid production is the major cause that contributes to the breakdown of the enamel, it's not the only type of mechanism possible. Sometimes <clears throat> bacteria have even additional mechanisms that contribute to this process. So for example, Streptococcus mutans, the one listed right here, it excretes something called dextran sucrase. And even if you've never heard of it, you should be able to tell me what it is. It ends in ACE. Whenever we have something ending in ACE, that generally means that it's an enzyme. So Streptococcus mutans excretes this enzyme that polymerizes sucrose. Remember, sucrose is table sugar. It's composed of glucose and fructose. So it polymerizes sucrose into this kind of gel-like matrix of glucan plus fructose 
in the dental plaque. So the dental plaque being that biofilm that forms on your teeth um, overnight and also just generally when you aren't brushing very well. So you get this dental plaque, you've got lots of bacteria living in the dental plaque. And so the Streptococcus mutans excretes this enzyme that polymerizes the sucrose, actually takes the table sugar from the food that you're eating, from the cookies and the candy and the cake and whatever else, um, and, and polymerize it into this matrix where it can live and thrive. And then specifically the fructose that's in that matrix, the Streptococcus mutans will ferment that fructose to lactic acid, you know, which is one of the acids that degrades the tooth enamel. And so what can you do about this? If you have these bacteria living in your mouth, does that mean that you're doomed to having cavities? No, you have two major types of defense. You can have good oral hygiene. You can brush several times a day. You can floss. You can make sure that you're um, getting a new toothbrush as often as you're supposed to. Um, use anti-cavity mouthwashes, depending on what your dentist recommends. And then also following a low sugar diet, you know, opting for water instead of soda or fruit juice at meals, um, reducing the amount of refined carbohydrates in your diet um, that will help you to be able to prevent cavities, um, as well as other diseases that are linked to high carbohydrate diets, things like, um, you know, heart disease and diabetes and that kind of thing as well. So consider how you can carry out these steps to prevent cavity susceptibility. If you're interested in how someone can determine their individual cavity susceptibility based on um, quantifying the levels of the um, of the acid production that their oral bacteria can carry out, then please check out my video called Snyder Test Auger for um, determining cavity susceptibility. And thanks for watching Biology Professor. Have a great day.